What's up, Control Freaks? And welcome to the Control Freak Podcast. I am your host, Alex Blackard, and I am stoked to tell you about our guest today. He is all over the Nerd Rage Championship trials and that series. He has multiple, he has two modern 10K top eights. He was a finalist in the Pioneer 5K in Minneapolis 2022. He was a modern top five, a modern 5K top four finisher in Newark in 2022. He Top aided in Pioneer in Louisville in 2022. He helped bring Blue White Narset back into rotation. And he created the Blue White Renin 6 that was at NRG Newark. I am speaking, of course, about George Jabor. George, how are you doing tonight? Oh, man, I'm so excited. I'm doing great. Uh, <laughs> that intro was... Um... I, I don't I don't usually um, list them all out like that and right? hear them all rattled off and uh, wow. <laughs> that's a, very if, if I've ever me. had a master of blue eye control on the on the podcast, it is uh, you certainly fit that bill because holy smokes, I mean just that list alone. I mean that's all in that's just in 2022. You're you're crushing yeah. it. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was just the second half of last year. Um, it was it was an awesome experience, an awesome ride. Uh, the, that tournament series is incredible, and the people on it are great. And uh, yeah, I was surprised to have come away with <laughs> that many uh, accolades. But here we are. Oh yeah, no, you have uh, certainly earned it, and I see you. If you uh, want to support, before we get into it though, let's get this housekeeping out of the way. If you want to support the content on, if you want to support the content elsewhere. Feel free to hit up patreon.com slash less Alex. You'll get a shout out just like our new patron Rocket. Thank you so much, Rocket. I do appreciate it. If you too would like to support the content directly for less than a dollar an episode, all you have to do is head on over, like I said, to patreon.com slash less Alex. Every patron receives a cool control freak sticker and a bunch of other perks. Go check it out. It really does mean a lot to me and the content that I make. And as a reminder, this podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, and wherever else you download and listen to your podcasts. If you want to do something a free way that can help the podcast, make sure to head on over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Give it a five-star review. Say a couple kind words about the podcast. It really, really does help out. All right. All the housekeeping stuff out of the way. I know why the folks are here. First off... <laughs> Uh, before we jump in, though, I do want to talk about a little bit about your background. You know, sure. um, I don't want to go all the way to the beginning or anything, but I do want to ask you, how did you start playing and mastering Azorius Control in in modern and then in Pioneer as well? I don't know about mastering, but uh, I'll tell you how I got started. <laughs> You're very humble. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically how I got started in Magic. Uh, a really, really dear friend of mine. Uh, who I won't dox. I don't know if he wants to be uh, known <laughs> or not. Uh, introduced me to Magic at the end of high school in uh, 2012, and basically he had he he was the only one out of the whole friend group or anyone I knew who played Magic, and it was super casual. It was kind of like I go to the comic book store. Oh, there's some Magic cards. There's a there's some cool art yeah. on them, and he kind of collected. And then. Um, he had this giant like plastic bin or whatever it is full of just like basically bulk cards, what I would consider today bulk, yeah. um, commons, uncommons, some rare sprinkled in. And we would basically just shuffle up. You know, he taught me how to like build a deck. Like you have this many right. lands, you want some creatures, you want some pump spells, whatever. Um, and so after I learned how to play magic, we would basically just dive in to this giant bin and take 60 ish cards, probably maybe more, yeah. maybe Maybe more, maybe less. <laughs> and just jam. And uh, the car the cards that I was first drawn to were actually green cards. Um, Same, dude. That's so weird. <laughs> and now it, look at us. We're it makes a lot of sense. Pages. <laughs> They're so cool. You know, you have all this mana and you have these big creatures and monsters and whatever. And you're just trampling your opponent. Uh, 
the problem arose when my my dear friend started to kill my stuff. Um, <laughs> you didn't like that, did you? I hated that. I was like, I just spent so many turns playing my land drops, playing maybe elves or some mana dorks, you know, just buying my time until I could play this six mana, eight mana thing. And now it's yeah. dead. Now I have two cards in hand, one card in hand. And so I'm like, light, well, I hate this happening to me. So I'm just gonna not, I'm gonna do what you did. That that seems that seems better. Yeah. Um, and so ever since then, I, I've dabbled in and out of various control decks. Um, I kept trying over the years to go back and play mid rangey decks, combo mm -hmm. decks, tempo decks, whatever it may be. Um, and I'm just not as good with them. I'll be honest. Sure. I it just doesn't click. Um, and control has has just clicked for me, Absolutely and so it has. <laughs> you know I've I've come to that realization. Uh, you know I, I still enjoy to play the odd deck here and there. Um, I played a bent tempo deck in Legacy uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago. Now I had a great time. I played it for a week or two, and then I was like, all right, well I got that out of my system. Back to playing <laughs> what I know and what what right. clicks for me is is control. Absolutely awesome, awesome. Um, so now, what is your favorite format right now? If you had to pick one, Ooh, we kind of talked about this in the pre-show, and I think you're almost <laughs> on the, you're almost willing to change your mind here, but I'm almost on the pioneer bandwagon. Yes, <laughs> yes, um, let's go. <laughs> very close. I've been enjoying it. Uh, I started uh, early last year. My friends and I got into it um, well before a lot of the current meta game had developed. Uh, sure. And ever since then, I've been playing it more and more. We first started playing in, you know, like local weeklies and stuff and yeah. trying out different cards and different decks. Um, but I actually have, have become accustomed to it in ways that I haven't with modern. I mean, first of all, not having access to fetch lands, not having access yeah. to modern horizons. I mean, modern's uh, expensive. Modern's it's really expensive. expensive now. And in terms of power level, it's kind of a relief. Or not power level per se, but um, just game Speed. mechanics. Yeah. Speed and game mechanics, yeah. Um, play land, pass. Uh, okay, play land, pass. On your end step, fetch. Okay, shuffle, <laughs> cut, untap. Play another land, pass. Okay, on your end step, let me fetch. <laughs> There's Here more game go. actions for cut. sure, yeah. <laughs> that being said, at the moment, Modern is my favorite format. It is the format I play the most. Uh, it's the format I've found <laughs> the most success with. Um, although it's, it's really close with Pioneer, a close second. Um, yeah. And then Legacy... If it were a competitive format, I would put it up there. Yeah. I've been playing local weekly modern FNMs, or sorry, legacy FNMs. Oh, nice. Uh, the last yeah. couple of months. There's, it's been so fun. There's no place around me that supports legacy like at all anymore. And it's so sad because I remember uh, there was like a shop maybe 10 years ago. We Every Wednesday, every Wednesday we'd go and play legacy. And they let you proxy cards too. And then of course that makes you want to get the cards. Right. Um, and yeah, I had like basically every blue deck you want, could want to play blue control deck I had in, in like non proxy. And then I sold my collection and now I'm looking at the prices of some of those <laughs> cards. I'm like, geez, I wish I would have no. held on to those, but um, yeah, no legacy sweet. Um, you're definitely so you're still on final answer you're still on the modern bandwagon i'll, I'll still my final answer is i'll vote for modern but yeah. <laughs> it, it may change here in the next couple of months who knows well and so just so those folks that are just getting here and just uh you know just getting in and listening to the podcast for the first time we will be talking about modern that is the main focus of tonight's cast so i know we haven't talked about it uh, in quite some time here on the podcast. Um, and it's not that I'm like trying to neglect it. It's just, I don't play it nearly as much as I play pioneer. Um, but we have you here. So hopefully you'll be able to guide me through <laughs> the conversation. Cause I'll try my best. Um, but yeah, also last question before we hop into it, what in your opinion is the best format for control? Now this is not uh, Pioneer. <laughs> yeah. It's not. And I've been I've been talking so? about this in my All discords right. with my friends and on Twitter. I hate the fact that I have to play cancel as my <laughs> I saw that new list you show. you published. Um, uh no, no, uh no cancels in there. I'm I'm trying not to. I, I'll do whatever I can. I'll 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 research every avenue possible, but <laughs> 
Um, modern is tough because it's not hostile to control, but all of the threats are so strong. And so it's not like a clear cut. Yeah. Control decks are better than, you know, X percent of other, other decks. Um, but I, I would have to say legacy, uh, which is, if you look at the meta game, doesn't make sense. It's for modern <laughs> and legacy. The control decks are way at the bottom. And in pioneer, it's like, you know, top five, top four, maybe even top two. Yeah. I think it's top two based on Frank Karsten's last, Actually, that's what we talked about in the last episode. So when you get <laughs> done with this one, go listen to the last episode. That's what we talked about. Uh, the Frank Karsten's big mod, uh, meta game breakdown for pioneers is cool. There you go. Exactly. But in my in my like physical experience, being able to cast <laughs> ponders and brainstorms and force of wills makes me feel so much better. Right. In in a, in a excuse me in the midst of a game where I do feel more in control as opposed to if I have to cast cards like absorb. You know, yeah. and memory deluge as opposed to, well, not expressive iteration anymore, but <laughs> yeah, longer brain pour, pour yeah. one out for the fallen homie, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so sad, so sad. I shed a tear, yeah, right. <laughs> um, all right, see, I thought you were gonna say reluctantly pioneer, but your disdain for cancel, I think it's clouding your vision. <laughs> no. It is, it really is. And this is kind of where I was with modern around this time last year, where. I was fed up with casting five mana to fairies, four mana memory deluges, three mana archmage's charms. It's basically a direct analog to how I feel about Pioneer today. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just a matter of time before something breaks through, something makes that big of a difference where I'm like, you know what? I'll play this every day. I'll play this anytime, anywhere. How? I know we're not into Pioneer yet, but this kind of goes with modern and Pioneer. How good? How how much has the deck changed since we've got the Wandering Emperor? That card is so good. I love that card. I don't think I can say it's my favorite Azorius. I mean, obviously, it's a mono-white card, but it's not my favorite. But, oh, my gosh, that card is just... It, we can pressure Planeswalkers. We, they don't just, like, resolve a Planeswalker and we die anymore in, in Pioneer. Like, holy smokes, that card is excellent. Yeah, I, I mean, Wandering Emperor, I'm, I've been playing basically not less than three ever since it was printed yeah and every week i tell myself this week's the week i'm gonna go up to four and i yeah. haven't done it yet but um it's it's that good i mean just it's very good it has some spots where it's clunky but you know what yeah when it's good it's insane i was just telling another friend this after upon yeah. your weeklies this past week like if i could have the the wandering emperor at the right time every time yeah. i could probably never lose the game never as long, so as, they don't, as long as they don't have a pesky uh, creature with vigilance. Um, <laughs> but even even sometimes when they do have a creature with vigilance, you, you can just make so many creatures that it's just good enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, uh, just you could you could you have so many answers. Wandering Emperor with all the support that the, the rest of the deck has. You'll be fine. Yeah. All right. So that's that's enough gushing about. I just wanted to bring that up because. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that card's great. Um, all right, so let's talk about modern Azorius control. Um, and just to start off, what is your general thought of modern in or I'm of, I'm sorry, what is your general thought of control in modern? Uh I love it. Well, that's the short answer. <laughs> right. I think it's great, I think it's incredibly powerful and it's underrated. Uh, okay. Especially because, and you know, I love him and I respect him. But when Andrea Mangucci puts out the uh, the power rankings and controls not on there, yeah, I saw you tweet kind of back and forth with him. <laughs> yeah, he's. I mean, he's great. He's probably in some ways correct, but um, <laughs> you know, it really casts a shadow on people's perspective of the deck. You know what? Like, very, yeah, it's not putting up definitely. Result. He's definitely got a. Uh a sway right <laughs> yeah yeah it's not putting up results and it's not on the power rankings this deck's really bad you know you're you're stuck in your old ways for playing it and i think i think it's just underplayed is a big reason it doesn't put up results but who knows well and also what are I, i'm sure that there are a percentage maybe even a large percentage of players like myself that have kind of given up modern and now i just want to jam pioneer azorius control um, so I'm sure there is a percentage of, and I know, uh, my buddy Mikey 
I don't think he plays much modern anymore, and he's been playing the heck out of uh, Control and Pioneer. So, yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I think another big part of it. Um, and, oh, hey, Mikey's in chat right now. What's up, Mikey? <laughs> Mikey is in chat, yeah. Uh, he's, he's in every chat always, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, another big part of the, the negative perception that Blue-White Control has or Blue-White X Control has in modern is I think people are playing the wrong version. I don't think, you know, playing the two or three memory deluges, the two Teferi Hero of Dominarias, you know, the four Archmage's Charms, I don't think that's the right way to build the deck. I think you're on the back foot a lot. I think there's a lot that can just go under you, and you're not going to be able to catch up with yeah. uh, how fast the rest of the format is when your opponent's playing turn one Ragavans, turn yep. two Rending Sixes, turn three Fables, turn four, oftentimes, you know, you're just dead. And you have this like memory deal, you're just gonna divination. Yeah, yeah, right. It's not gonna have the, the best numbers. And people are stuck on that version of the deck. Yeah, no, and that is the majority of the decks that I've seen. Uh obviously at this point, um, I'm more of a content creator than a grinder. Um, so I definitely see I, I look for lists that I know have had success, right? So I look at challenges, I look at even 5-0 lists occasionally. But the ones I see in modern, they are those style of decks where you're, you'll even see Teferi 5 still, which I know a lot of players, I think it was maybe Tandy who said, yeah, don't don't play Teferi 5 in modern anymore. It's just not good enough anymore. Oh, yeah, I've been I've been trying to um, whoever would listen. I'll tell them, <laughs> right? You, you cannot. You can you just cannot just play it in Pioneer. You can play three in Pioneer. It's OK. Yeah, it's it's great. Pioneer. Um, so those are the lists I've been seeing and I'm just like, I'm not excited about, you know, tapping out on turn five to draw a card like that <laughs> as much as I love the card. Yeah. It just seems a little, a little sus. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look at your current list. I'll bring it on screen here. And for those listening, um, well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but we have, Basically, the gist of it for those listening, we've got Narset Parter of the Veils times four, okay. Um, and then we've got, or is this? Oh, I'm sorry, this is the wrong list. Nope. Is this for modern? This is modern, yeah. This is modern, yes. So Narset, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Narset Parter of Veils times four. We've got Teferi three times uh times four. One Jace the Mind Sculptor. Woo woo. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> Love seeing. Ah, uh, man, that card got me back to playing Magic. Um, you are playing Kahira. Yes. Um, and then you're playing three Chalices. I'm not trying to go through all of them. Another card that I've seen you just playing the heck out of is Days Undoing. Um, and obviously there is excellent synergy between Narset and Days Undoing. What's the percentage of the time when you just basically end the game on turn four? Is it high? It's not high. It's it has probably won me maybe 30, 40 percent of my games, but not wow. on turn four. A modern is like way too fast for me to be able to jam it. Have my Nars that live. I mean, unholy heat's a card that you'll oh see gosh. everywhere. And yeah, so it's it really hard to do it on turn four, but it it does happen quite a lot. And then it wins me games that I would have never otherwise won. Yeah. So for those for those listening, two days on doing alongside four Narset. I mean, this combo. I played uh, the Demir version um, in Pioneer, and we were playing three days on doing, and it was lights out. I mean, if you ever got to do it, the game ended immediately. Yep. Um, so I can only imagine. You know, obviously, you've got better draw spells, and you get to play Jason Mind Sculptor, so you get to find it. Probably very often, I would imagine. Yeah, sometimes too often, but uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, and this is so. This is this type of list. I mean, there's probably five to ten flexible cards that I've been going back and forth for. Sure. Um, if you notice, like, there's no leyline bindings in this version. Um, that's something that I've been trying to experiment with. I hate when my removal is removable. Um, and yeah. <laughs> it's just really yeah. it's it's really underwhelming but it is 
incredibly powerful. So this is the most recent list I've been experimenting with, and it's still in flux. I see. I can get behind this. My big thing. I I agree with you. And there, I think the modern Azorius control community is quite split on whether you should be playing that card or not. And in my opinion, like you said, I don't want my removal to be removed. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. So I really dig prismatic ending. Um, that card seems stellar. It just kills yes. almost everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then I notice you are also playing Blood Mood in the sideboard. How's that? What's your thought process behind that? Yeah. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, or shoot, it's probably been a month or two now, right before the last NRG um, mm -hmm. uh, in March, I'd been struggling against um, creativity. And mm. I went back and forth on so many cards. I tried to play spell pierces in the main deck. You know, I, I tried force of negations were in and out of the main deck, in and out yeah. of the sideboard. And you know, after a while, I forget who suggested it. Some someone suggested it, and if it was you, you can go ahead and take the credit in the chat. <laughs> it's or whoever whoever says it first can take the credit. Yeah, right. But you don't you yeah. don't have to be uh, truthful. You just have to be quicker. <laughs> I, I have no evidence to the contrary. But <laughs> people people have done it in Legacy a ton. Uh, on oh, and Mikey off. says it was him. <laughs> yeah, it was it was Mikey. <laughs> and so I thought, why can't we try to do this in modern? I mean, the mana is just as good. Like you have your fetches and shocks instead of your fetches and your dual lands. So how powerful would it be if I can do everything I'm currently doing in blue white, but actually just shut people out of the game sometimes, some number yeah. of the time. Yeah. And uh, I took it to that, to that event. I didn't do great at that event, but um, Patrick Wu, a couple of weeks later, I want to say, uh, did really well with a uh, his own take on the Blood Moon version of Blue White Narset um, at MXP Oakland, I think, hmm. uh, or some event, some event like that. And so I I think Blood Moon is is the way to go. To one to two Blood Moons in the sideboard, I would highly recommend. Yeah, awesome. I mean, I've just I've never I've never really seen that, and so that's super cool. Blood Moon is always a card that. I've had to be, you know, past modern, right? I haven't played modern much recently, but in in modern, in, back in the back in my day, <laughs> you would have to uh, be weary of Blood Moon. So I think I find it very interesting. Obviously, you're playing five islands and two planes, so you should be fine. But yeah, that is extremely interesting. Um, so what are, in your opinion? the three best matchups and the three worst matchups for modern Azorius control. I would say the, the first two that come to mind for best would be like Merc Titan and hammer. Um, and is a huge reason to play this type of deck and three is probably rhinos. Um, especially with the main deck chalices, you've got main deck oh, counter yeah. magic. So you've good. got, you've got Supreme verdicts. And so um, that one, that one's pretty okay. Nowadays they're playing main deck mystical dispute though. So you got oh, to be really cautious and, and prepare for that. Um, yeah. But again, the chalices really, really help against Murktide Regent and against Hammer Time. Um, cards like Prismatic Ending are really, really good. Cards like Counterspell are not, so you definitely try to bore them <laughs> yeah. pretty often. But your Supreme Verdicts, your Fire Ices, your Removal, I mean, you can just overwhelm those type of decks. Um, the, the difficult ones, um, the first two that come to mind would be Creativity and Scam. Okay. Um, they're very disruptive. Scam, obviously, with the um, with the grief and undying oh, yeah. situation, and also their main deck thought seizes. They've got blood moons. They've got fables. I mean, they're really putting you on the back foot and putting pressure on a lot of pressure on. They're front loading it all in terms of yeah. One. And if you can't keep up, that's all it takes, and you're dead. Yep. That makes and so perfect sense. The sec yeah. I, I, I'm getting chills just thinking about that deck. <laughs> um, and the other one's creativity. I mean, blood pressure's kinda... rising and everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where the, creativity has a lot of disruption. Sometimes it's thought seize, sometimes it's spell pierce. Um, they have really early pressure again with their four red and sixes, four fables that you have to be able to answer. Otherwise, those are just going to win the game. Yeah, and while you're answering those, they're getting ready to creativity you. Which, if that resolves, you also lose the game. 
So <laughs> the whole game, they're just asking you question after question, and you have to have answer after answer. And sometimes you just don't have it. Yeah, no, that that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, that that deck seems like a like a headache. Just constantly getting thought seized every turn, sometimes <laughs> twice a turn. Like yes, <laughs> no, that's that's you. modern right now. It's really it's, it's really high pressure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah, and so, what are your general thoughts about modern? Um, what do you think the best deck in modern is? Where would you in and in relation to that, where would you put Azorius Control? Would it would it be top three or maybe somewhere I would put, lower? I would put Azorius Control top five. I wouldn't put it top three. Um, one of the issues it, that you'll find for modern for Azorius Control is it doesn't really have an I win button. That's very um, true. And it never really has. <laughs> right. And the version I play sort of does more than others. It does have the Narset Days Undoing um, combo, if you will, you know, quote unquote oh, yeah. combo. But it's it's pretty fragile. I mean, it's a planeswalker. It dies to it dies to just creatures on the board. Like sometimes it just doesn't stick around. Yeah. Um, but Merc Tide Regent, you know, turn one Ragavan. Oh, you don't have a removal spell? Pretty much I win. You know, creativity, yep. turn two. Ren, turn three fable. You don't have an answer to those. Like it's pretty GG. much the yep. hammer, obviously, just like they can kill you on turn two. It's it insane. Just doesn't it's matter. So fast. Turn two, turn three, whatever it takes. And same with rhinos, like sometimes two four force is just enough. So all, a lot of these decks just have an I win button. And it's hard to put Azorius control above them in the rankings if someone's trying to go to a local RCQ or an NRG, whatever it may be, and just spike it and just win. Uh, Azorius Control is probably not the deck I would recommend. Yeah, right. You know, it's 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 hard to say. I would even recommend maybe like burn ahead of that. Like sometimes yeah, you just get something proactive. And you just burn your way into the top eight. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So that's, that's kind of how I feel there about. And and so the best deck that I would say, um, I don't think it's Murktide. I think Murktide is like kind of mopey as far as I win buttons go. Yeah. Uh, if I wanted to. If I could competently pilot any deck, um, <laughs> it would I would either bring creativity or hammer to a tournament that I want to say like, hey, this is my best chance to win this tournament. It would be creativity or it would be hammer. Awesome. Creativity, or, well, you heard it here. Creativity or hammer. And both those decks definitely uh, have an I win button. <laughs> um, although I will say, you know, Narset plus stays on doing. They're typically not coming back from that but it's possible i guess if if they're already ahead on board um, yeah and you know sometimes you, you hit the mat the right matchup and teferi alone is an i win button you know just yeah. casting that planeswalker against a cascade deck oh, yeah. you kind of win you know like so the, it, it's a lot more gray than black and white absolutely absolutely um Awesome. Well, that is kind of where we're at with modern and that's, uh, you know, George's, uh, tips and tricks for modern Azorius. Do you have any other thoughts on modern before we, uh, head on over to pioneer? Um, no, I mean, I, I love the format and I think you said earlier, what, what, what card was it that got you back into the, uh, was it Jay's? Oh, Jay's the mind sculptor. Yeah. Uh, for me, oh, it was yeah. counterspell. You know, oh, um, nice. I had taken a couple year hiatus after college. You know, I was doing you know career stuff, and I got married, and we were doing some yeah. moving around, and so I took a couple year break. And then I saw I was watching the MH2 spoilers, kind of like out of the corner of my eye. Like, all right, yeah. well, eh, that's not interesting. Eh, I don't care. Okay, whatever. And then I saw the counterspell reprint. And oh, yeah. I I was like, okay, I am going to try this because. When I played modern for four or five years, whatever, however long before that, I had to play Mana Leak and I had to play Remand and I had to play Logic Knot. Uh, yeah, they for were the longest bad. time. I was praying for Counterspell to be printed. It would not be too strong. Please, Wizards of the Coast. And they finally did it. And that really is the card that, that brought me back in. And um, it, it's not too strong, it turns out. Yeah, it's no joke. <laughs> It's it's really not. And I, I was campaigning for that card for the longest time. 
to get unbanned and jace like come on mm -hmm. when jace i remember when jason uh blood Braid got banned uh, unbanned rather and i was like let's go it finally happened and they did absolutely <laughs> nothing except for exactly what i knew would happen is it'd be like a one or a two of an azorius control yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's totally fun and it's a fun card and people love it yeah it is and it's so iconic it, it's it's such a shame that in the most popular competitive format which is modern i think i think that's fair to say uh that yeah. it was banned for so long and it, and yeah. blood braid i mean blood braid's an iconic card too so um i don't have any you know fuzzy feelings about that card at all but i know a lot of people do so it's cool that they kind of went on the ban list together and each got off the ban list together it's so to have them here yes um and I don't think does Blood Braid see any play at all in, in Modern uh, at all? No, and I know uh certain Jun decks, Saga Jun, Saga List Jund, uh, they've been playing like um Is that Boomer Jund? Is that what they the, call it now? Yeah, <laughs> Boomer Jund. Um, or as my friend would say, it's just Jund. It's not it's Saga Jund. List Jund, it's just Jund. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, they've been playing Shouldred in the four drop slot. Oh, yeah. That's a so, hell of a card. <laughs> Braid just kind of just didn't stand the test of time. Unfortunately. Well. No skin off my back. <laughs> but anyway. Um, all righty. So that is modern. Um, I guess if you're watching this for the modern content or listening for the modern content, <laughs> stick around. You might enjoy Pioneer. But we're going to move on to Pioneer. And so kind of the same thing. What are your thoughts on, on Pioneer right now? What are your thoughts of where uh, Azorius Control stacks up in Pioneer? Um, so yeah, I, uh, I think Azorius Control and Pioneer obviously is one of the top decks, which is nice to say, I don't get to say that about many formats for Azorius yeah, Control. Right? It's kind of refreshing. It is a little unfortunate that I have to face the mirror more regularly than I do yeah. in other formats. Uh, because if there's one thing I hate, it's losing mirror matches. Oh yeah. Like, I actually, I actually like the mirror match. It's, I, I don't know. It's yeah, it's but fun. I hate losing it. Oh, sure. Yeah, I get infuriated yes. <laughs> whenever I lose it because I always yeah. think, like, I should be able to win this. <laughs> um, yeah. Right, right, right. Um, but I do like the fact that Teferi 3 is not legal because that just made the mirror match. Uh, it, it took all the fun and all the decision making out of it. So feather in the cap to Pioneer because we don't have to deal with that. And in, in modern, you do. So Yeah, it's it's definitely a very bitter and very sweet card to have in modern and it's nice to not even have to worry about it here in pioneer yeah um, as so much yeah as I, I, would... <laughs> I was just gonna say as much as i would love to cast that in pioneer uh i'm glad i don't have to play with it especially how prevalent uh and you know popular azorius control is in pioneer I, that would be a nightmare yes i don't even want to think <laughs> about it <laughs> um what were we talking about no um but yeah uh, how do you think? How do you think it stacks? Up? How do you think Azorius Control stacks up in Pioneer? I think it's really good. I again, I really like my version with the Narset and Days and Doing package. And yeah. I don't know. I feel like sometimes people think it's maybe a meme or a gimmick or wow, it's, it's some kind super of super combo. But it's just sometimes. First of all, Narset alone <clears throat> will win the game, especially yeah. against decks like Hidden Strings, against uh, even against like. Oh my Mono gosh, yeah, Green that's really with, good against Lotus. Fiora, <laughs> like they're drawing cards every time they play a 4 4 or 5 5. Um, and so it, it really stops a lot more than you might expect, uh, mm -hmm. just looking at it on the surface. But then sometimes they they do like there's too much to answer. There's just there's just too many threats. Every set brings stronger yeah. cards for all of the decks, which is a which is a good thing. Yeah. Like you want a variety of strong decks. I mean. The Atroxa uh, creativity deck is now is now on the scene. Like that's really cool to see. Yeah. Um, all the new gruel decks that have come out. It was boats before. Um, you know, I've been seeing some dragon stuff happen. Like this, oh, yeah. is, this is good. I played Just Guy Dragons a couple days ago. That was sweet. How'd you like that? Yeah, it's pretty mid, but it was fun. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think the blue's necessary, which is weird coming from me, but I think gruel is just like you get the elves. I don't yes. know. I think, I think it's just like overall. And you don't stretch the mana base at all. So, yeah, I think if I was yeah, going to play dragons, you know. I red, blue, maybe? Version. 
Red yeah, blue could be good, but yeah, the maybe, or, or maybe blue, blue black. black try try Seligmar or Seligmar. Maybe that might be interesting. Maybe I don't know. But here, that's, see, that's my I'm, point: is you have a lot of choices. Yeah, yeah. However, as a control mage, you <laughs> only have so many answers, and only so many of them are really relevant. Playable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so the easiest thing to do sometimes is just take all the threats from your opponent's hand. Yep. Like there's nothing more straightforward or simpler than that. Like you're faced against Rakdos and you're like, well, there's a Fable in your hand, there's a Shoulder in your hand, and there's like a Chandra in your hand. I have one counter spell. I'm going to eventually lose to one of these cards. I can't counter them all. If you ever thought sees me, like I'm going to be, I'm going to be naked. There's, there's not going to be anything I can do. And so being able to threaten this, like being able to uh, keep the board clear on turns one and two with your cheap counter spells, with your cheap removal, Slam a turn three Narset, maybe counter counter another couple of couple of cards, whatever. Slam your Narset, untap, slam your days undoing. GG, the game's over. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I, I think I think it's the the better way to be building the deck. Although people have been finding a lot of success not doing that. Um, yeah. So both are very viable. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And right now, uh, for those not listening, I do have. Or for those listening, I do have his list on screen. It is four Narset, three Wandering Emperor, three Tefiri. And again, I'm not going to go through everything. I will say that you are playing Laydown Arms, my man. Let's go. Um, <laughs> we do also have, of course... Um, well, where'd it go? Seagate's Restoration and Emiria's Call. <laughs> so... Tell me about these cards. Is these are two cards that I don't think I've ever tried in Pioneer Azorius Control. Maybe as like a piece of content, I've tried it. But well, have you ever really, really wanted to hit your fourth land drop, and then all you have is a Narset on the field? Well, boy, have I got a deal for you. <laughs> oh, um, oh, yeah. so wow! Narset's able to find these. This that's guy that's is a some of the man. <laughs> spice of it all is. It kind of takes the place of the Dwari Disruption, which can sometimes be a land, sometimes be a spell yeah. that you'll see often in decks, which I, oh, yeah. I am a big fan of Dwari, oh, yeah. especially in the Yorian decks. But in this version, when I'm playing the four Narsets, um, and I'm playing... In this version, I think there's only two marches. In some versions, I go up to three or four. The Emerius Call is the better one in this version because I don't have subtleties and force negations that I do yeah. in Modern. Um, so that, that Emerius Call is able to be pitched to the march, or again, I, these are lands that I could conceivably find off of a Narset if I'm if I'm in a pinch. Man, um, they're brilliant. I didn't even consider that. Yeah, it's percentage points. Like it's you know it's small stuff, but um, tiny edges. I um, no, that's that's brilliant. Um, and I'm sure everybody in chat is like, obviously that's why they he's playing those, and I'm just a dummy and didn't see it. But <laughs> um, and for those. Uh, not watching. He is playing two days undoing uh, again to go along with Narset. How, what's your? I assume you don't get to rattle this off nearly as much in Pioneer as you do in Modern. It's it's counterintuitive, but it, it's it's the opposite of what you said. Really? Because, That's surprising to me. Yeah, it, the answers in, in Pioneer for Narset, the threats in general in Pioneer are weaker than they are in Modern. That's fair. I don't have to worry about turn one Ragavans. I don't have to worry about turn two Renin Sixes and, and just this like this onslaught of really early yeah. you know, turn, turn one Grief, whatever. Um, and there's the cards like Unholy Heat don't exist. Yeah, Un no, Cards like Fury don't exist. And so it's a lot more likely to survive in this format than our set. Ah, I gotcha. Well, see, I was thinking just the likelihood of you drawing it, just because you're obviously like your draw spells aren't nearly as good. You don't have to chase the mind sculptor to dig yeah, three cards deep. Um, granted, you are playing a big, big Teferi. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and you're playing four shark typhoons. That yeah. is interesting too. You want to tell us about that? It blocks really well. You know, it's uh, it, yeah, it'll it's like, it's kind of like a remand ish effect where you're like, let me just buy one turn. I just have to block real quick. Yeah draw another card maybe it's the days undoing that i need for the next turn or maybe it's the wrath or whatever it is um the fact that it's uncounterable a lot of the decks right now i've been seeing some uh grixis creativity decks you know a lot of i, I think rogues as well maybe plays a couple some counter counter magic um it's nice to just have something that's not really interactable 
especially with sure. blue white being a top deck and you know having a high likelihood of facing the mirror match um it's kind of just I, i've been on i don't think i'm going to be playing less than four for at least the foreseeable future until the next set or whatever happens yeah i mean you can definitely just make a five five shark and kill your mirror like your azorius control opponent yep. it's like totally feasible um probably not going to happen game one but certainly game game two and and potentially three um so yeah that 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 makes total sense um so another one i wanted to talk about you know you said earlier you don't like cancel so we're not playing absorb you are however playing three change the equation of course this is a brand new card from march of machine uh you get to counter it's a two mana counter spell that says counter target spell with mana value two or less or counter target mm -hmm. red or green spell with mana value six or less mm -hmm. i love it i've been playing it main i've been putting more and more and more in i went from one to two main deck but you're playing three so how good has this been for you i went down from four to three but only because i had 61 cards and i had to cut something <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i was i'm no 61 again, card I, special for you <laughs> maybe i should have just done that but <laughs> Uh, I, as I, I think I mentioned before, I, I will look for any excuse I can to try to cut the absorbers from my deck. Because if you're on the draw and you have this turn three cancel in your hand and your opponent plays literally any threat on turn two, maybe it's even a Thalia, so now your absorbs four mana. I mean, it's disastrous. Yeah. And no. so, especially so many decks play mana dorks in, in, in Pine Yellow, yeah. all these green based decks. And that's the thing too, right? Is there's so many hits off of it. You can hit so even if you're not playing against a green deck, there's yes. so many relevant one and two spell one and two mana value spells that you can hit off of it. I went through uh, me and a friend. Uh, I started the spreadsheet, and he he's now appended a bunch more matchups to it. But I went through like all the decks to see what cards are hit and what cards are missed by this by change the equation. Heck yeah. And a surprisingly low number of cards are whiffs. Like wow. it hits so much. Like a lot of the threats, it comes down to the, the 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 long and short of it is either the threats are cheap or they're red or green. <laughs> right. Here. It just happened, it just has just so happened to be that way. And it being two mana is a big pro. Oh, it, yeah. Missing some stuff is a huge con, but I think the pro outweighs the con. Like being two mana is enormous especially in a narset deck oh yeah well yeah oh my gosh yeah and a narset does but also in a format where we really have to pick and choose our interaction and our permission spells so no i mean i i definitely want to try this list um i'll probably end up trying this next week because this list looks super spicy you're also playing two uh spell peers which that makes total sense to me. A lot of the things we die to are uh, non-creature spells. So, and the format is uh, quick enough to where, you know, you can play a card like that and it'd be very relevant much later in the game than you would imagine. So yeah, it, it definitely can be, especially in you know, like counter wars, like <clears throat> yeah. counter spell here, counter spell there, and then just spell pierce the last one um it's also really helpful again i've front loaded a lot of the uh mana cost of this deck just to be able to keep the board clear on the early turns for an early narset or wandering emperor like if those are able to land on an empty board you have such a huge advantage especially the narset because yeah. that finds you more gas the second down tick usually finds another narset so you kind of start chaining them off like memory deluges uh, but spell pierce you know it counters fables it counters neoforms. It counters thought seizes if you're on the play. Like, yeah, I, I found the utility to be good. It doesn't scale well, but in this version of the deck, I'm not really trying to scale the game that much. Like, I I don't want to go to turn twenty like a typical blue white pioneer yeah. control deck. Yeah, no, that that's very fair. Um, uh, as as a note here, you are playing uh, Kihira and you are playing two Brimaz King of Oresco's in the sideboard. Um, I know that. In uh, Azorius Eye, do you do you follow this person? We talked about. Yes, his, he did a huge, or they did. I, I don't know if it's a a man or not, but they did an enormous deep dive on the percentages between, um, you know, what version of the deck folks were playing. So, 
And we we got into that last week in the podcast. And holy smokes, um, Kahira is just the correct call based on the based on the information that uh, you know he compiled. It, it is just the correct version. I think it was like seventy eight percent win comp- win percentage on on Moto, which is insane. <laughs> um, That's really high. Yes. Yeah, I think it was like seventy six or seventy eight. It's high 70s though it's not 50 um, and 60 yeah we're no, talking yeah. high 70s i mean it's very yeah. impressive yeah, absolutely. there's not a, there's not like i mean it's a free card you know it's a free card oh yeah um, it doesn't really matter what it does absolutely um but yeah so you're on the lay down arms and the kahira version so you know i i approve of this list not that my opinion matters in the least but <laughs> oh, it, I, it I absolutely it. does I, I like to i like to really encourage everybody around me in my circles like just always give input because i've definitely not arrived at any of my conclusions in a vacuum like it's definitely a synthesis of everything i always hear i'm always listening to everything everybody else says so Definitely give yourself some more credit, Alex. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so Azorius is actually in the chat tonight. He's he, uh, They're uh, correcting me. Uh, 78% of the decks that Moto publishes, which is 4-3 uh, or better. So not raw 70%. So there is a distinction there. However, this is against a winner's metagame, I guess you could say. So that's there's something to be said about that, I believe. Um, and thank you for the correction. I appreciate that. Um, Definitely want to get the correct information to the folks listening. Um, but yeah, so what are your thoughts? Obviously, you're playing change the equation. So you're very you're playing three main deck. So you're very high on that card. What about uh have you tried invasion of new Phyrexia yet? The new uh Teferi Akosa of Zelfir? Is it what the what it flips into? Have you tried yes, that yet? I, or I tried it a couple of streams ago. Uh, and I did enjoy it. Um, there's just only so many sideboard slots. And it's kind of one of those, you know, sideboard card for the grindy matchup type of things. And you have two Brumasses, two Caracals, and a Kahira already. Um, plus, you, you, yeah. you'll bring in stuff like Farewell against Rakdos, for example. So it, it's difficult to find a spot for it at the moment. Yeah, it's kind of um, like pick your poison. How many cards do you want to have devoted to a certain matchup kind of thing? Exactly. And I yeah. think I think this weekend I will be playing it. I'm, I'm going to... There's still a few more changes I'm making to this before I take it to an RCQ this weekend. Gotcha. Uh, and I, I do think I'm going to be playing the Invasion. I do think there's something to be said for playing new cards, just in a... Like, regardless of the context. The surprise right factor. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think, you know, it's not um insignificant you know people are going to be playing around perhaps the regal caracals or oh, the yeah. farewell yeah. but if you just slam like four two twos that's about to become a planeswalker whatever cards they have in their hand that they've been sculpting their plan maybe goes out the window so absolutely um i, I do think i'm going to be playing some this weekend i i love it's just another planeswalker like how how bad could it possibly be Absolutely. And I think there is something to be said about, and this is like just, I think, general decent advice for anybody maybe that's new to Azorius or maybe somebody that has been playing for a while. It's good to zig when others are zagging with our sideboard because if they see, probably most players right now, if they see Kahira, they're going to expect to see Regal Caracals right now. Um, And if you can zig while everybody else is zagging, Basically, you want to be doing the sideboard tech that most control players aren't. So there could be a time when, you know, maybe uh, Bane Slayer and Lyra come back where maybe it's time to switch back to the cats, you know? So I don't know if you agree with that, but I certainly have found that to be true. Definitely. Yeah. Just be careful not to zig yourself too hard sometimes. Yeah. I, you can don't, really don't big brain out. it too much, but. <laughs> Um, on the topic of Bane Slayer, there's a new one in the new set. Yeah, uh, the, uh, it, Boon. I forget what it's called, but Boon Slayer Angel. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there you uh, go. I saw it in an MTGO deck list the other day, and it caught my eye. Like, oh shoot, you can kind of give something else lifelink, or you can give some first strike flying lifelink um, because of the backup mechanic. So yeah, backups. Really I don't know sweet. if we're going to be seeing more of that in some lists. I'm not playing it right now. Um, I maybe if I were on the angel package instead of the cat package, I would put it in, but 
Yeah. Something Boone? to be on the lookout for. Boone Bringer Valkyrie. It's a five mana four four uh, with backup one. And then it has flying first strike and lifelink. And then, of course, the backup mechanic is when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter, counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following abilities until end of turn. So that's pretty good. And so is it is it is the type line of it an angel? Is there a subtype angel? Um, I believe so. Yeah. Okay, then I'm just gonna call it Boonslayer Angel. Perfect. Yeah, it's Angel Warrior. Excellent. Because because it needed to be a warrior for some reason. <laughs> uh, threes are warriors, right? In mythology or something. Oh sure, yeah. Thanks. Um, that's that's awesome though. But um, does that just replace Bane Slayer Angel since it has backup? Maybe, maybe not. I, does does the one power and toughness matter? It can back up itself, right? It can, can just become a five five, I guess. Wait, can it? Uh, when this enters the battlefield. Oh yeah, yeah, it can. Yeah, so yeah, it becomes a five five. Well, now you can just play both. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, awesome. I don't think there's too many demons and dragons floating around. Uh, I guess dragons. Dragons. There's some dragons here or there. Well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, with the new uh, invasion, I think that card's really good. The invasion of Tarkir. I know we haven't seen it too much yet, but I do think that if... Oh, that card's so sweet. I yeah, love Rose dragons. Seven. I love dragons. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so... All right, so talking about Pioneer metagame, uh, what is your favorite... Or what is the top three decks in pioneer and then the bottom three decks in pioneer in your opinion i will say pioneer fluctuates a lot more than modern does that's very fair um, okay well this weekend if you were yeah, to play a tournament weekend, yeah. and you're trying to analyze what are the three uh decks you expect to play the most what uh what would you play i would, or what put, would you expect i probably put um you mean what do i what do i expect to play against yeah yeah play against like as your top three decks rakdos like. rakdos midrange is definitely number one yeah it's popular people like it and it's powerful it doesn't have a lot of bad matchups um so that's it's definitely number one i think it has been for for a little bit of time um another one that i expect to to play against and part of this is because um it's not too expensive uh you know maybe you, maybe you borrow the mana confluences but grease fang oh um, yeah it's very strong. Looks I don't. I don't know if anyone here was watching the, my stream yesterday. I had a terrible time. It's definitely one of the decks where change the equation um, has a lot of misses. Like missing Grease Fang itself is yeah. It's, it's, it's like that's exactly what you want to hit in that deck. So, uh, my opponent plays a turn one Stitcher Supplier, um, and then I counter their turn two Grizzly Salvager or whatever with a Spell Pierce. I play my Narset on turn three. I, I'm like, I'm ready to win. It's over GG. Yeah. They have nothing. Then they just play their Eldritch Evolution with basically nothing in their graveyard. They mill the Parhelion, and I'm just dead. And <laughs> On the going spot. Back, going back to what I was saying earlier about decks having an I win button, this yep. is definitely one of the few oh, ones yeah. in, modern, or in Pioneer that has a straight up I win button. Absolutely. And I think that makes it really popular for RCQs. Oh, yeah. Um, and then what are some, some decks that you probably could, could write off? What are good matchups for Azorius control? Everything. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, I will, I will say in, in my version of the deck, I think mono green is a much better matchup than it is for most people. Oh yeah. Change the equation. It uh, does just that. And <laughs> exactly. change the, <laughs> change the equation is very good there. Also the Narset combo is huge because you just take everything away from them. Again, yep. it's hard to keep up with their cards one for one. All their stuff is a two for one. Yep. And so just being able to erase everything is huge. Um, I will say I haven't played too much against rogues. So that I played one's that kind of like, just the other day. It's fun. It, it's it's one of those decks that's like, this might be difficult. Like other blue decks that go under a control deck are often I find difficult for. Oh control. yeah, well because they have pressure plus they have counter spells. Yeah. So yeah, it could definitely be it could definitely be a little hairy there. 
Yeah, and for this version of Blue Eye Control that's been playing Lay Down Arms instead of just extra Fateful Absences and Marches, yeah. I think Grease Fang is a very difficult matchup. Now, I hear Grease Fang players say Blue Eye's a difficult matchup, but I think that's <laughs> mostly only when they have a turn to rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, and if right. they don't, it's it's kind of like you've got your Chariots, you've got your Eldritch Evolutions, you've got Thought Seizes, whatever sideboard cards, maybe Trespassers are in there. Um, I think it's pretty difficult for the sorcery speed lay down arms. So you're saying to just mulligan to rest in peace against Grease Fang. You heard it here first, folks. I will probably (laughs) be bringing three to my RCQ this weekend. I've been on two for a few weeks, and I have not felt that it's been sufficient. Yeah, I mean, Grease Fang is definitely a world beater, or at least it can be. (laughs) Um, I think decks like uh, Hidden Strings that try to draw cards, I think decks like creativity anything that anything, anything with the card big score in it and you have a narset four narsets in your deck <laughs> um phoenix you know with their treasure cruises like a, a lot of these card draw decks are going to be almost buys a deck like spirits is going to be very difficult yeah. um you know again it plays very much like a delver deck a turn one threat turn two threat and just hold up counter magic for the rest of the game yeah uh, plus some flash threats those are difficult so you got to kind of know what your enemies are and <coughs> your sideboard accordingly. Like I always, you know, whenever I post a deck list or a sideboard guide, I encourage people, hey, make adjustments based on your expected metagame for your locals. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, St. Louis is a huge, like, burn, at least in modern, it's a burn meta. Oof. Um, so I assume those same burn players would probably be playing some aggro decks. So maybe mono white humans. Um, so I would, you know, be, uh, leaning towards skewing towards that. Um, if you're in the local area in St. Louis, um, but all right. Do you have any other, uh, anything else to say about pioneer before we call it a podcast and take it home? No, i have just, the fact that I've, I've been enjoying it. And, um, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they poo poo the format. They're like, Oh, it's not modern or it's slow. And it's, I don't know. Give it a try. Give it a, yeah. give it a couple of weeks worth. Play a couple of different decks. You don't know what you might enjoy in the format. Um, but uh, hey, props props to Wizards for the cards they've been printing. Props yeah. to the current ban list. I, I'm enjoying it. Um, it feels like a very well-rounded format. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so where can folks find you on the internet? So I'm here on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Jab Jabber. You can find me on Twitter. I tweet probably more than I should (laughs) twitter.com slash jab jabber with an underscore at the end. Uh, Jab jabber was taken already for some reason. I don't know who that other person is. Um, They can find me on Patreon. That's where I post some strategy. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of Excel sheet stuff. I I do it for my work sometimes. So I've been trying to bring that in to the hobby here. If you have Uh, the skill, might as well use it, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it comes a little naturally, but patreon.com slash jab jabber. Uh, definitely appreciate any support there. Um, I've all, I'm also on Discord. You can find all these links on my link tree on my Twitter. And I will have that link tree in the description below whenever we post this uh, on YouTube and in the actual podcast. So if you're listening or you're watching on YouTube, go down there, check it out, and follow him on twi- Twitter, Twitch. Uh, subscribe to his Patreon because he's a wealth of knowledge. Um, any other places? I didn't mean um, to cut you off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at, no, not at all. Uh, I'll be at the next couple of NRGs as well. So if you're there, swing by, uh, participate in the tournament, participate in the side events. But regardless, come say hi if, you, if you're if you there. Uh, definitely love meeting new people. Um, I'll be in Minneapolis in uh, May. Uh, I think it's in May. Wow, that's right around the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's right um, there. <laughs> that's a Pioneer 10K and a Modern 5K. So uh, I'll be I'll be doing both of these formats that we just talked about today. Awesome, awesome. And uh, as always, folks, if you want to, you know, reach out to me, you can follow me on Twitter at Les Alex over there. Um, I also make silly TikToks at Les Alex <laughs> over there as well. I just started a Facebook page and we are actually streaming it to the Facebook page tonight. That is less Alex comma, the control freak on Facebook. Um, and of course 
Shout out to Rocket, my newest uh, supporter over on Patreon. If you want to support the content and support the podcast directly and you uh, get value out of it, uh, consider consider becoming a patron over there. Definitely, you know, helps helps motivate me um, when I'm editing these down and everything. But um, you can support the content directly for less than a dollar an episode. Like I said, head on over to patreon.com slash Alex. Patrons receive a cool Control Freak sticker along with other perks based on whatever level you decide to support at. And as a reminder, the podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcast, as well as YouTube. And if you made it this far and you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like it, comment down below, and subscribe. And if you want to help in a very free way, head on over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and show some love by giving a five-star review and a couple of kind words. That really does help our growth and visibility on the podcast apps and all the podcast platforms because that's how they decide whether you know the podcast is good or not. So definitely, definitely uh, check that out. But I appreciate everybody. Everybody in uh, who followed tonight on Twitch, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight in chat. It was a really and George, thank you so much uh, for coming on. I do appreciate it. Yeah, thank um, you for having me. It was, it was great chatting. It was great to be on here. I'm I'm honored to be invited. Absolutely, and you know, anytime you want to talk about some new tech or you know any any new discoveries in the Azorius world, or even if you start playing Demir or anything, anything <laughs> control control related, uh, feel free to give me a shout and we'll have you back on because. Uh, I think the people like to hear about uh, from you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about Demir. You'll have to pry these teferis from my cold, dead yeah. hands. But, but I appreciate <laughs> the sentiment. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, as always, keep spreading that Azorius propaganda. And I will see you control freaks in the next one. Adios.